Hello, I'm Dirk and today I want to control a motor with a microcontroller. This is one of those experiments which are included in such Arduino or ESP32 starter kits. They are available from various vendors and brands and if you want to get into microcontroller programming, they are a good starting point. In these kits, such projects are usually well described, however, the motor is just one of some three dozen experiments there. That's why I want to take a closer look at it here. In such a scheme, there are three aspects. First, it's the motor itself, which needs power. This requires special electronics, because the required current and often the voltage is too high for a microcontroller. We'll look at that first and start even completely without a microcontroller. How to connect that one is the next point. And then, of course, we'll also have a look at how to program that thing. But until then, it's a way to go. So, let's start with a motor. To control a DC motor is actually quite simple. Connect the plus and minus of the power source to the two connectors of the motor and it starts spinning. Reverse the two wires with the power source and the motor turns in the other direction. Now I'm connecting the two motor terminals to the breadboard. For those who haven't worked with such a thing before, the five pins in the column above the center are interconnected and so are the five below. This allows me to easily connect two LEDs of different color in parallel to the motor. A red one here, a blue one next to it, then add a 10 kilo ohm resistor and you can visually track the direction of the current with the LEDs. Red lights up in this direction and when I reverse the polarity, it's the blue one. Connecting cables is nice and good as starting point, but if you want to control the whole thing electronically, we need a more stable setup. Fortunately, there is a very simple idea for that. You only need four individual switches. I move the two motor terminals here on the free area of the breadboard. Then I arrange the four buttons in a rectangle around them. The way I'm setting them up, they switch between the left and right sides. I connect the buttons to ground and voltage, first on the left, then on the right, and then the two terminals of the motor. Pressing the diagonally opposite button simultaneously, I can operate the motor in both directions. The LEDs also show how the direction of the current changes depending on which pair of buttons is pressed. This arrangement illustrates the basic idea of a so-called H-bridge. The name comes from the arrangement of the four switching components and the load in the middle forming a large letter H together. Now, pressing buttons is not our goal. We want to electronically control the switches in a way that works with the currents and voltages of a microcontroller. And if you are thinking about transistors right now, you are right. We can replace the switches with transistors and control the current flow this way. There are various ways to do this and a lot to consider, but since that's not the focus here, I'll skip these technical details and instead link to some excellent explanatory videos here and down in the description. We will use a ready-made solution, the L293D. That's a standard IC for controlling small motors. It is built into many motor drivers available for microcontroller projects. With the L293D, you can control up to two DC motors independently. There are also some other wiring options, but that's not on our focus here today either. Let's look at the circuit diagram to understand what's happening. In the center, the L293D is shown. Be aware that the pins are arranged here according to their function and not as they appear on the case. The IC has two voltage inputs, one for the logic part and one for the motor. We connect both with 5 volts, but the motor could also be operated with a significantly higher voltage up to 36 volts. It is sufficient to connect only one of the four ground pins. The L293D uses ground also for heat dissipation, but with our small motor this is not an issue. On the right side of the circuit diagram is the motor with the direction LEDs. 
Note that the motor is not connected directly to voltage or ground at any point. Instead, both terminals are connected to the output pins of the IC. This is similar to the H-bridge with the buttons. Between the power source and the motor, there is always a button and never a direct connection. Let's build this part first. The IC goes onto the breadboard, followed by the two voltage connections and the ground, and then the motor with the LEDs. It may seem a bit confusing, but the circuit diagram shows what's happening. Now we need to connect the inputs. Let's go back to the circuit diagram. The L293D has three inputs for each motor a general enable signal and then a control input for the left and right sides of the bridge respectively. Depending on whether the control input is at high or low level, that means connected to plus or ground, the corresponding pole of the motor is either connected to the supply voltage or to ground. And here we need to be careful. For the IC to behave correctly and predictably, the inputs must always have a clear level. If you only connected the inputs with the switch to power, this would not be the case when said switch is open. The input then would be connected to nothing, and that's not good. Therefore, each input has a 10 kilo ohm resistor to ground. When the button is open, this resistor pulls the input to ground potential, which is why it's called a pull-down resistor. When the switch is closed, the input is directly connected to the positive pole. Although a small current still flows through the resistor, it's in the range of a few hundred microamperes and that is neglectable considering the motor. On the breadboard, I lead the three inputs of the IC to the side. Enable is blue and goes all the way to the left, the two control inputs are yellow and orange. Then come the pull-down resistors to ground, now the three buttons and the connection to the positive pole. With all that, all inputs and outputs are connected and we can use the buttons to make the motor run in one direction or the other. And the buttons now operate with input levels and currents that microcontrollers can easily provide at their outputs. So we've finished the first part, the control electronics. And now, big moment, the microcontroller comes into play. It replaces the buttons and is instead connected to the control inputs of the L293D. Here we are using an Arduino compatible module with an 80 Mega 2560 microcontroller. The procedure, however, would be very similar with other modules and microcontroller types. One of common microcontroller's main features are versatile ports that can be used either as input or output. Especially the AT Mega 2560, which is integrated into the Arduino compatible module we are using here, comes with many such general purpose input output or shortly GPIO pins. However, for our small project, we only need three of them to replace the three buttons. And now we recognize much of the schemes we already had. The L293D and the motor remain connected just as before. Only the three buttons are replaced by three GPIO outputs that can be programmatically set to high or low level. In our circuit diagram, you can once again see the pull-down resistors on the three input lines. They prevent undefined signals on the inputs of the L293D, which could cause the motor to flinch during the initialization phase. For output lines, you always have to connect such resistors externally, while microcontrollers often do have internal pull resistors, they need to be activated through programming and we are exactly concerned with the time between power on and microcontroller is fully initialized. We need to talk about the way we tell the microcontroller what to do. For this purpose, we use a small joystick. It has two variable resistors, so-called potentiometers, on the two axes. These potentiometers have two fixed connectors with different voltages applied and a variable access point. This access point can be moved to either end providing a value proportional to the ratio between the two voltages at the fixed connectors. When it is exactly in the middle, the joystick being in the neutral position, the voltage is approximately the average. 
In our case, the potentiometers are placed between the supply voltage and ground. This arrangement allows the variable outputs of the two axes to cover the entire voltage range between ground potential and the supply voltage. We take this output to an analog pin of the 80 mega. These analog pins can be programmed as analog to digital converters, converting the applied voltage into a discrete numeric value. 0 volts is 0 and the supply voltage of 5 volts has a value of 1024. The neutral position is therefore close to the value in the middle, 512. So we are done on the hardware side. However, a microcontroller doesn't make any sense if you don't tell it what to do. That's why we now take a look at the program that translates joystick inputs into motor control. This control program is kept very simple for this video. It consists of four short parts. In the first part, we define the input and output pins. Initially, the two analog pins for the joystick, then the three pins for the L293D. Direction A on pin 10, direction B on pin 11 and the enable signal on pin 12. However, these are all just definitions so that we can use these names instead of quite non-intuitive numbers. In the second part, the setup function, we configure the microcontroller. The analog pins are by default analog to digital converters, so we don't have to change anything. But the three output pins must be set up explicitly using the pin mode method defined in the Arduino library. In the third part, we define the four methods for motor control. The direction A and B methods control the direction signals. In each case, one of the signals is pulled to high level and the other one to low level. These are the only combinations which make sense. Both signals low or both signals high means that the motor is not moving, but we can achieve this through the enable signal as well. Said enable signal is turned on with start motor and off with stop motor by setting the pin to high or low. Eventually, in the fourth part, we wire it all up. The loop function has two similar parts. The first part queries the x-axis of the joystick. Remember, in the middle the value is about 512, on the left it's 0, on the right it's 1024. We only check two limits. Anything below 300 is switched to direction A and the corresponding method for the direction signals is called. A value above 700 switches in the same way to direction B. In between, when the joystick is near the middle position, nothing happens and thus the direction does not change. In the same way, the joystick's y-axis is evaluated. Stick it up to start the motor, stick it down to stop it. Again, no change if the joystick is in the middle position. The loop function is repeatedly called by the microcontroller as soon as it has run through. Therefore, there is a pause of 500 milliseconds or half a second at the end. So all joystick checks and, if necessary, output changes happen at most twice per second. And that's the whole program. Now we can control the motor with the joystick. So let's bring in the Arduino Mega. We've already uploaded the program and the joystick is also already wired up. Those are the four connections at the bottom. Still missing is the power supply and, of course, the three connections for controlling the motor. Now let's bring in the joystick and turn on the power supply. Moving the joystick upward now activates the enable signal, but we haven't chosen a direction yet. Only when we do so, the microcontroller activates the corresponding signal and the motor starts running. Moving the joystick downward turns off the enable signal and the motor stops. Turn it on again and then change direction. And again. You can see, when the joystick is in the neutral position, the control signals and therefore the motor movement do not change. And thus we've reached the end of this video. It's been quite lengthy this time, but we've accomplished a lot. We've seen the basic principles of driving a direct current motor using direct current, then how to change the direction by altering the polarity. We've become acquainted with the H-bridge and the integrated circuit L293D, which contains such an H-bridge. We connected it to an Arduino Mega microcontroller and 
in the end, adjusted motor speed and direction programmatically with a small joystick. That's not bad at all. However, there are some additional ideas around this topic, which I plan to cover in a follow-up video. For now, I say goodbye and thanks for watching. This is...